Hi, welcome to SBR Sports Picks. I'm Peter Loshak. Today is Friday, July 7th, and we have uh, we have UFC 213 coming up this Saturday. Of course, sitting next to me is Daniel Gracie, who did the morning show with me uh, this morning, and he has graciously agreed to uh, come back and do a preview specifically of UFC 213 uh, today and uh, this afternoon. And, of course, we're going to talk with regular guest Andreas Hale calling in remotely via Skype. Uh, Daniel Gracie, thanks for joining oh, us once thank again. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure to be here again. Andreas Hale, thanks for joining us once again. Oh, as always, I appreciate it. All right, this is exciting because, of course, uh, Gracie can give a Daniel Gracie can give us a, a, a you know an, an inside scoop as far as uh, you know what the mindsets of these fighters uh, might be, and of course, their stylistic matchups that uh, might indicate betting value one way or the other. UFC 213, it's a great main card. I guess let's start with the with the main event, right? Uh, Valentina Shevchenko and Nunez, and uh, we touched on this in the in the morning show. Uh, Daniel Gracie, I gave the opinion. Obviously, it's a very both fighters at their peaks, both very, very impressive fighters, and the odds are, are accordingly very, very tight, right? This morning, it was actually minus 110 on each side. Now, a little bit of money has come in on Amanda Nunez. She's now minus 115. I did watch the weigh-in. Smart this, people. Yeah, you think so, right. <laughs> I did watch the weigh-in this morning, and Nunez does, I mean, she does look, she looks bigger. She's definitely taller, uh -huh. right? She's got long legs. She's going to be able to, you know, so uh, I can understand why that would be. As we said in the morning show, I was kind of leaning towards uh, Valentina Shevchenko here. Now she's minus 105. Uh, let's start with you, uh, Daniel Gracie. Very quickly, why do you prefer Nunez here? Well, like I said on the, uh, on the morning show, I think that uh, every fighter that comes from a judo background, mm -hmm. uh, woman, especially woman, uh, they have that comp competition skills, the power and the explosion that a woman needs to win a fight. I always said that. I train uh, many women, mm -hmm. you know, train with me, and that's what I notice. Every time I make them more explosive and more powerful. They win fights. And just like Ronda Rousey, Amanda Nunes come from a judo background. Right. And I think that gives her uh, the advantage of having that power and surprise uh, uh, her opponent. Uh, that's what I think. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Nunez is a supremely impressive fighter. My sense is just that because, you know, obviously, uh, you know, in the first fight, Shevchenko lost, and she, you know, took Nunez to the distance, which is not easy to do, right? It concerns me that Nunez has, might have some stamina issues, and just in general, Shevchenko looks very, very rounded, so I feel like I would give a slight edge to her. Let's go to Andreas Hale. Andreas Hale, uh, can you break this tie? I'm leaning Shevchenko. Daniel Gracie's leading, Nune ne leading Nunez. What would your lean be here? Well, I think, Peter, I think you hit it on the head with conditioning. That's my biggest concern with Amanda Nunez in a five-round fight. If that, that last fight they had went five rounds, so if Tanker was getting a lot of momentum. My biggest concern, however, is the size advantage that Amanda Nunez right. is going to have. So if Tanker walks around at about the weight that she's fighting at, she's more suitable for a lower weight class. Against Amanda Nunez, who packs a lot of power and has an excellent ground game, she could tire her out in this fight. But... She's a competent striker, and that's one of the things that allows Shevchenko to stay in the fight a little bit longer than uh, Amanda's previous opponents. So I'm going to lean with you on this, Peter. I'm going to pick uh, Shevchenko going the distance. If it ends within five rounds, it's got to be Amanda Nunez. But I think as the fight drags on, it could lean towards Shevchenko. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's hard to imagine this. Uh, you think this fight will go five rounds? Because it feels like Nunez is either going to get a knockout early or a finish early or, you know, maybe really gas out and get clipped. What do you think? Well, I think if, uh, if it goes the distance, it could go the distance. That's for Shevchenko. Anything within five rounds is going to go Amanda Nunez's way. She has the power to finish the fight. And I think she's very lethal in the first two rounds of the fight. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how she goes after that. But if, if you're betting, if you're going to do a prop bet, you have to bet Amanda Nunez via finish because that's just how she finishes off her opponent. She rarely goes the right. distance. And she's only gone the distance with Shevchenko in recent fights. Um, but aside from that, she's, she's knocked out everybody. Misha Tate. Uh, obviously, Ronda Rousey. You know, the last time that she got stopped was by Kat Zingano, who has great ground and pound. And Shevchenko doesn't have that kind of power. So, uh, like I said, Nunez by knockout within the distance. But if it's going to go the distance, I got to lean with Shevchenko. All right, Daniel Gracie, what do you think about yes, that? I, I agree. I think I, what I think is that another thing that we're not uh, thinking is that after that fight, I think, uh, of course, uh, uh, Nunez and her coaches came back to the drawing board and said, right. that can't happen right. again. Exactly. And that's also a factor that is going to be, you know, speaking louder on that fight. If she uh, learned with her mistakes, uh, I think she'll be coming, you know, she'll come a little m with a little more stamina than the you last so. fight. You think there's something that she can do in training, or do you think that her stamina issues are just biological? There's nothing really she can do. Well, 100% what I think is that uh, if you're going to do five rounds, you have to train 10. Yeah, You of have course. to double the number of <laughs> yeah. rounds that, you, that you're going to do. It. Now, the pace that she trains 
this is what is the most important because uh, if you train on a, sm a slow pace, you can hang in there for 20 rounds. But if, if you train on a high pace, yeah. you're going to be there yeah. for five rounds, eight rounds, and you're dying tired. So that's what I, I will do specifically for this fight. I will make her die every round. Mm -hmm. So when she gets a tough round, she's going to be prepared for her. So that's what, uh, what uh, like I said, I think Nunes is going to win this fight mm -hmm. because of her talent. I think she's a better fighter. But uh, when you get tired, you get tired. You become a target, and then there is nothing you can do. Yeah, so if you think she, she's going to win, you think she's probably going to win inside the distance then? I don't think it's going to be distance. I think she's going to win like right. second or third round. Okay, so Nunez winning inside the distance is plus 170. So if you like Nunez, maybe instead of taking her to win at minus 115, take her inside the distance at plus 170. And Shevchenko by decision is plus 365. So maybe if it goes to the cards, uh, Shevchenko is the big uh, favorite to win there. Maybe you do a hedge with Nunez inside the distance at plus 170 and Shevchenko by decision at plus 365. Andreas Hale, you know I like sometimes to do these, uh, these hedges with props based on how the fight's likely to turn out you think that might be the best way to go here absolutely that is absolutely the way to go on this fight i don't see amanda nunez going the distance uh, she's a finisher yeah and she looks to finish people in five rounds it's just more time for her to finish somebody off all right yeah that's what i'm thinking and also uh, daniel gracie uh just for full disclosure here you are a personal uh, uh associate of, of amanda nunez right oh uh, yeah she uh, right. uh, she i met her she came uh to train with us in massachusetts when i was there and I have a fighter, uh, Kalini Medeiros, who's like a very good flyweight. And uh, uh, she brought uh, uh, Amanda right. to train with us. And she's a great person. You know, right. I became a fan right away. And every time I see her fighting, like, I want her to win. You know, so. Have you ever met Chevchenko? No, no, never. Well, maybe she's a great person, too. Maybe I mean, too, probably, yeah. right? I mean, <laughs> but remember, I'm on this Brazilian. Right, right. So there's very little chance that you would have actually come on this video and said, uh, well, to be honest, I think Nunez is going to get her butt kicked, and I think she's going to look like, no way, right? No, no I'm, I'm, I'm realistic. I'll do really? it. I'll do it. Okay. I'll say it. If I thought so, yes. All right. Well, one thing I can guarantee you, this is a great fight, and it's going to be a great matchup, and two women at the top of their game, absolutely, and I think probably if you like Shevchenko, which I think I do, take her by decision at uh, plus 365, and if you like Nunez, Nunez definitely take her at uh, inside the distance, plus 170. All right, great breakdown, guys. Now let's get to the next fa uh, fight on the main card, which uh, which I think might might be my favorite bet of the entire main card. And we also discussed this. Uh, and Daniel, you uh, you uh, disagreed with me on this one a little bit, I believe, uh, in the mo in the morning. Let's talk about it. It's Whitaker against Romero. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, a big age difference here, right? Romero is 40 years old. Whitaker at uh, 26. Romero, a vicious striker. We know that. But again, if you look at his last six fights, he doesn't his finish come later in the fights they don't come in the first two rounds and uh, I think that, that that Romero knows about his advancing age he's going to be respecting Whitaker Whitaker obviously is going to respect going to be respecting Romero the whole fight I think that at one and a half rounds the over minus 190 the over one excuse me the over one and a half rounds at minus 190 is a great bet here I just feel like I agree I don't think it's going to go uh, uh, the distance but I think there's going to be a stoppage in the third fourth maybe even fifth round over one and a half minus 190 uh, Daniel uh, Gracie you still think that's not the way you think you see it turn playing no, out. I think I think Romero is going to win that fight. I, I probably uh, second or third round. Second or third. Yes, uh, and like I said on uh, on the morning show, is that I think he he prepared his body so good for his age and sure. for what can happen on the fight that he's surprising people. I've been hearing that that he's older. You know, this is not going to go far right, in the UFC right. for the past I don't know, four <laughs> right, fights. Right, right, right. And right, he's right, been right, knocking right. people out. You know, good people, good fighters out. So I I think he's uh, he's really going to. Surprise people one more time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, again, this uh, this fight also has very close competitive odds. Whitaker minus 115, Romero minus 105 right now. My sense is just that it goes over one and a half rounds. Andreas Hale, do you agree with that or disagree with that? Yeah, I think it'll go over one and a half rounds. I think there is going to be a little bit of respect. But, you know, there's very few times that I look at a fighter during, like, open workouts or away and, it was, and, and start leaning towards that fighter. Looking at Yorel Romero at 40 and seeing what he did the workouts, the dude's talent is out of this world. Yeah. Um, and I think he's going to get the finish. I just don't think it'll be inside of a round and a half. I think it's going to take a little bit of time. Plus, I think he's going to deploy that Olympic wrestling for once. Whitaker has the top takedown defense, I believe, in middleweights right yes. now. Um, but he, got, he hasn't fought anybody who really has great takedowns, who's a great wrestler. You know, he fought like Steven Thompson at welterweight. Joel Romero's an Olympian, so I think he's going to get him down to the canvas, and that his ground and pound is nasty. So I think mm -hmm. Romero will take his time and pick his opponent apart, but I don't, th I don't think he'll waste too much time. I think this just goes slightly over a round and a half, though, for Romero. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 these two fighters obviously have tremendous skills. Whitaker actually has the highest striking weight in middle striking rate in middleweight history. 
Did you know that? Highest I strike rate in middleweight history. That. Yeah, he's not just a, and, and but Romero, of course, has great striking defense, and uh, and Whitaker also has great takedown defense. So it's going to be tough. Let me just ask you this, uh, Daniel Gracie. At what point? What, what what would you have to see or what would have to happen for you to to start to admit that Romero was maybe taking a step back, a step, uh, you know, a little bit of a step down in terms of his his quickness and his reflexes? He's definitely going to be the way that he trains. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when you get to that age, uh, you actually have to train double that right. you train when you're young to keep it up, to keep it up your heart pace with the with the young boys. You know? And I think he does that. From you know, from watching his fights, the way he fights, I think he knows that. Especially being uh, you know an Olympic level wrestler, he 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 didn't train on that level before, so he understands that. You you are facing an athlete. Most of the guys that we see f you know fighting today, they kind of like play a little bit of MMA and then they get excited and then they start to train. <laughs> yeah. They it's not everyone that comes from that background in some martial art or some skill like he is he's an olympic wrestler yeah and he knows how to train on that level so he just turned that energy into mma that's it mm -hmm. so uh i think it's gonna take a while for him to start to slow down because he knows that right right yeah i mean at some point again like like we said in the morning show i was like if he's 65 years old you expect him to be as quick as he is right now no probably he's not gonna, not. right it's not gonna happen all right so i'm not gonna bet who's gonna win here i'm only gonna bet the over one and a half at minus 190 but if i had to make a bet here Probably because of just my anticipation of, of, of Romero having some decline in quickness. Uh, I would probably take Whitaker at minus 115. Uh, Andreas Hale, if you had to make a bet here on who's going to win, what would it be? That's got to be Romero. I mean, I love Robert Whitaker. Right. Don't get me wrong. But I think that Yoel Romero is just way too talented. He, and he's dynamic in many forms. You know, not just his striking, but his wrestling. He, I mean, if you see this guy's hip tosses, they're amazing. So I think he'll get his hands on Whitaker, and he's got more ways to win. And Whitaker, I mean, I'm not counting him out. I think the guy's a devastating striker, but I think he might be out of his league against mm -hmm. Romero. So why then do you think that right now, uh, according to the market, and the, the, it has gone down a little bit, a few days ago, Whitaker was actually minus 135, and Romero was actually a pretty somewhat of a big underdog at plus 115 now it's back down to a minus 115 Romero minus 105 but still the market has Whitaker as a very very tiny favorite what, what why do you think that is Jacare and when he knocked out Jacare it changed everybody's mind about mm -hmm. Whitaker because nobody thought Whitaker was going to do what he did against Jacare and, and after yes. that and, and considering the Romero fight you know Jacare and Romero went to distance a lot of people thought Jacare won that fight people are going to do MMA math and start siding with Whitaker I just think that's the wrong way to go you look at their two skill sets you look at what Romero has to offer it's just a lot more than what Whitaker has, right. and th that's just my two cents on it. All right, awesome breakdown. Both Andreas Hale and Daniel Gracie leaning Romero in this fight, and uh, I did bet the over. I'm not going to bet either one of these uh, guys <laughs> to lose for sure. That's for sure. But I did bet the over one and a half at uh, minus 190. I think that's a good bet. All right, now let's move on to another one that uh, I think is just going to be a pass for me. Maybe one of you guys can uh, can can push me on one side here or the other. But the uh, the third fight between Fabricio Verdum and Alistair Overeem. Obviously, uh, the last fight was in 2011. Over Overeem won that one by decision. The fight, again, this fight has very, very competitive odds. Right now, Overeem, slight favorite at minus 130. Verdum on the other side at plus 110. And uh, the uh, the market is expecting a, a relatively uh, early finish. Uh, the over at one and a half rounds is minus 175. The under is uh, is uh, plus 155. Uh, I don't know. It's the rubber match between the three of them. Do you have anything to say about who you think might be more likely to win this one, Daniel well, Gracie? Uh, now we get to the point that... Uh, Fighters trying to reinvent themselves right. just because the UFC crowd want to see knockouts. If Verdun is smart on this fight, he's not going to strike. Right. Take the fight to the ground. Right. You are a world champion. You are top-level jiu-jitsu black belt. Why are you going to take the risk? Why are you giving the other person that is a striker on the other side the option of playing on, your, uh, on his field? Bring him to play on your field. Right. Uh, we have examples like... Uh, Damian Maia, they tried to be a striker just because people want to see striking, and he started to lose fights. And then when he became the jiu-jitsu fighter again, now look where he is, you know? And I think he's going to get that belt just because of his jiu-jitsu. Now, uh, uh, MMA is coming to a full circle. That's what's happening. On the beginning, of course, it was jiu-jitsu against other, uh, the other martial arts, and then in Muay Thai came, and then boxing, and all that. So now it's the point that because of people wanting to knock people out all the time, jiu-jitsu is effective again. So that fight is going to depend in who is going to do what. If Verdun tries to strike with Overeem, I think he's going to get knocked out. Mm -hmm. If he tries to go to the ground, Overeem is going to get submitted. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the pure truth. But, but let's not forget 
that Verdun is training with a top-level striking coach that is uh, on King's MMA, uh, what's his name? Uh, the the uh, guy from Shootbox, he was the trainer of Shootbox for many years. Um, Rafael Cordeiro. Oh, right, right, right. Rafael right. Cordeiro. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Verdun has heavy hands, mm -hmm. good Muay Thai, and amazing Jiu-Jitsu. So, let's see. Let's see what's going to happen. For me, it's going to be Verdun by submission. Mm -hmm. uh, but, we, you know, Overeem can always knock Verdun out. So Right, right. Let me. I'm looking for the, uh, for the uh, prop here. Verdun by submission would be plus 565. Ah, yeah, you might have something there. Uh, Andreas Hale, what do you think about that? Look, everything Daniel Gray says is spot on. Fabrizio Verdum has turned himself into a striker against a lot of guys, but you don't want to do this with right. Alistair Overeem. You're, you're a much better guy on the ground. And we all know Alistair Overeem has a little bit of a glass jaw, but why chance it? I mean, Overeem is a world-class kickboxer. I mean, this guy is an excellent striker, but if Fabrizio Verdum gets this fight on the ground, it's over. Um, so that, that, that submission at plus five, 500, oh, you got to take that. You have to. I'm just, my concern is that Verdum has been able to do so good, at, you know, striking on the feet hopefully the Miocic knockout woke him up and said you know what sometimes I don't need to strike my background is in jiu-jitsu I'm an excellent jiu-jitsu practitioner and nobody can beat me on the ground and hopefully he comes out with that but if he comes to strike with over him it's going to be a short night wow <laughs> yeah all right so uh, so who so what do you think is more likely to so if over do you think it's more likely that Verdum uh, subs him or that or that over uh, does pull it out because right now over is a small favorite at minus 130 uh, tough question God, I asked the tough questions Andreas it's, Hale it's really tough because you just don't know what mindset Fabricio Verdum is walking into this octagon yeah. with. You know, if he comes in there and says, you know, because especially after the last fight they had in Strike Force, where nobody enjoyed the fight, and Verdum was on his back and Overeem refused to engage. You know, maybe if Verdum's going to want to push the action, but if he's smart, you know, he, he can find a way to take him down, close the distance. Overeem's not very good if you press him up against the cage and drag him to the canvas and, and, and get the submission victory. I, I, I really don't know. But I'm going to say that Fabricio plays is smart because he wants to get back in the title contention and submits Alistair Overeem. All right, so maybe the best way is just to take uh, Verdum as a big uh, underdog to to get the submission. Big underdog odds, plus 565. I'm going to stay off this one as far as the best concerned. Daniel Gracie, yeah. if you had to make a decision, give an opinion on this one, who do you think is going to win? I, th I think Verdum's going to win. Uh -huh. I think Verdum's going to win by submission. Uh, even though I had I, one of my fighters from Philly, uh, Jonathan Webb, it was there doing uh, over in his camp. He was there helping him uh, on his jiu-jitsu. And he said that they had the best camp ever, that he never saw over in with such a really? energy and confidence, uh, confidence uh, to win this fight. But I think uh, Verdun has more uh, the combo, uh, more of a combo than, than, uh, than over in. I think mm -hmm. Verdun is going to use his striking to approach and then put him down. If if he's smart <laughs> to <laughs> right, do right, that, right, right. you don't want to strike him over <laughs> yeah. him. You don't want to get hit by that guy. Yeah, and as we were talking about in the morning show, as you were saying, a lot of times close fights like these, competitive fights, can turn on like if someone gets a cut or if something happens, as you were saying. So uh, so this might be a fight where it's just like uh, it's kind of a toss-up. Uh, 100%. 100%. All right, well, let's see. Well, if you want Verdum inside the distance, it would be plus 229, and Verdum uh, by sub is uh, plus 565. All right, now let's go down to, again, I'm going to stay off that one, although it's going to be a great fight. I'm just, I'm just, it feels like too much of a coin flip for me to uh, to want to bet actual money on it. And then the next fight that's interesting is Jim Miller against Anthony Pettis. Another interesting fight, right? Uh, Pettis, of course, uh, returns to uh, to lightweight, and that's probably a good thing for him, right? I, mean, I think so. Yeah. I think he's going to be so much uh, stronger than the other fighters at the mm -hmm. division. And uh, he showed that already when he was fighting on that division. He was killing everyone. Yeah. Uh, again, it's just hard to keep, you know, the diet and the training to keep your weight down. Yeah. It's hard. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's people, like every fighter that after they finish the fight, they just want to eat. They want to, you know, hang out a little bit. Uh, you know, relax, and then it's hard to keep that weight. But uh, like I said, I think that he did what he did on that division, and uh, I'm glad he's back because I think he's going to, you know, be doing really good in there. Now, in front of him, Jim Miller. Yeah. Guy has, I, think, I don't know how many fight of the nights he has. Yeah. You know, that's why the UFC keep bringing this guy. He's an amazing fighter. Uh, his record doesn't tell what he is as a fighter. And this is another another fighter that uh, used to be a jiu-jitsu guy and then start to strike. And then his career started to go ups and downs because of that. But he still has striking and, you know, he still has that jiu-jitsu. Let's see what he's going to do, you know, to to stop uh, Pettis, uh, 
striking skills. That's that's what's going to be the main thing. For me, this is fight of the night. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely an interesting matchup. It feels like, you know, they're reintroducing Pettis uh, in, a, in a lightweight division to, you know, to give him sort of like a gimme win to reintroduce him with a good win. But again, Miller is no pushover. And just psychologically, this is like a must-win spot basically for Pettis because he's had a bunch of losses in a row. And it also feels like it's a no-lose spot for Miller. If Miller loses, it's not a big deal. If he gets a win, all of a sudden his career j jumps up a step, right? Exactly, 100%. 100%. So that's a tough he, psychological I think, I think he's going to be the underdog on this fight. And uh, like always, he comes as an underdog and he surprised people. So uh, if 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 uh, that happened, it's going to be a really good surprise for everyone. But let's not forget that he's a great fighter and he's very dangerous. He's yeah. a very experienced fighter. He's been doing that forever, you know, since the IFL. So... Let's see. Yeah, it's a tough one. So, again, Mil Pettis should be the favorite here. It feels like they're setting him up for a win. But would you want to take him at minus 230? Andreas Hale, what do you think? No, I wouldn't want to take him at minus 230. The reason why is I'm concerned about Anthony Pettis' confidence. Um, I I'm not sure where his head is at. He doesn't look like the same fighter. He tried to drop down the featherweight. Clearly, that wasn't the weight class for him. Max Holloway destroyed him. But he was drained coming into that fight. Back at lightweight, you know, obviously he's going to be stronger. But where is his head at? Um, to take him at minus 220 is a little bit of a risk for me because Jim Miller, we always know where his is at. He's going to come to fight. And, and whether it's on the ground or standing up, he's never going to back down. He's never going to take a step back. So with that being said, I, I would stay away from this fight just because of those odds. I can't I, – I think Pettis will win because the talent alone is exceptional. But I just don't know mentally how he's coming into this fight, and Jim Miller's not going to give him an opportunity to break. Right. I mean, my sense is that yeah. I mean, Miller's going to Miller's going to use the way the strategy, which is uh, that you use to defeat Pettis, no matter what, which is pressure. Right. He's going to pressure him. My sense is that maybe though it feels like it's 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 just setting up for a Pettis by decision result, and so maybe you want to either bet uh, Pettis by decision on that prop, or that the fight goes a distance at uh, minus one forty five, because again, you have so whenever you have a fight where there's like two fighters with mutual respect, which I feel like it's going to be uh, this fight is going to be the. Those are the fights that I expect to go, you know, over the totals or to go the distance. Uh, you, Pettis knows that he's on a losing run, so he's going to be like, I can't get caught here. I have to, you know, be a little bit conservative. And Miller knows that he's in a no-lose situation, so maybe he's like, let me just send it to the cards and maybe I'll get a, a lucky decision there. I'm thinking that maybe the fight going the distance at minus 145 might be a bet. What do you think? Yeah, I, th I think. You think uh, so? Go I'm ahead. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think so. And I think that uh, Pettis is going to come a little better than before because mm -hmm. now he, he's he noticed uh, – that his weight cut was too much yeah. last time. So I'm sure that he keep up. Like I, like I said in the morning, depending what your camp is going to adapt and do it, mm -hmm. uh, if they saw that he had no energy on that fight, and that that's why I think he lost that fight, uh, the second fight, keep your body you know, a little lighter so he can have an easy weight cut and you know, come with a lot of energy for the second one. Right. You think Pettis is gonna? What do you think his strategy is gonna be? Do you think he's gonna like go for the knockout? Because I, I feel like this fight has Pettis by decision written all over it, and Pettis by decision is plus one seventy two. I, well, I think that he's gonna try to keep G Miller far away from him, right. striking. Yes. Right. Yes. Back to that flying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walking on the cage. Uh, but remember, G Miller is a softball, powerful. Tough fighter, you know, short. Yeah. He's short. What makes, you know, sometimes people think that it's easier. No, sometimes no. you get a, a short fighter, you know, you're trying to put your striking and you can't find that person, you can't find that fighter. So we'll see. I, uh I, th I think he's going to go distance, too. I think yeah. he's going to go. The angles can be completely different. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, Andreas Hale, maybe you don't want to take Pettis at minus 230, but what about Pettis by decision at plus 172? Yeah, I like that a lot. You know, my biggest concern, my other concern with Anthony Pettis is he's not very good fighting backwards, and Jim Miller's a guy who's going to keep coming forward. So I'm curious how he's going to control the range and the distance. But either way, I see this fight going the distance because Miller's a guy who's not going to quit. Pettis, I don't think he's going to take a lot of risks exactly. in this fight. Even though he's a risky striker, uh, the way that he'll set up his strikes and his kicks, I think he'll be very safe so he doesn't get countered. Exactly. So I think this is a safe bet to go the Yeah, distance. see, there's just a psychological position that Pettis is in. He's not gonna he's not gonna be taking as many risks as he might normally take. Yeah, exactly. Because of his last fight. Right. So he he He's in like a very soft spot. So I mean, do I fighters don't... do fighters think that way psychologically? Is that in their minds? Like a hundred percent. Like I said, if you're winning fights, you're confident and you go. You got a right, little cocky. Right. Exactly. What makes yeah. you a little more dangerous, <laughs> yes. you know? Yes. But when you're losing and you know that you're on the soft spot, they're like, oh, maybe they're gonna cut me. You know, maybe you know people are not gonna start to pay attention on me. They don't want to take that risk. That's what uh, that's what it's right. Uh, what happened on the fighter's mind? He's like, I need to win this fight. When you have that pressure of needing to win a fight. They can say whatever. 
it's a pressure. Of course. You're going to go yes. there and you're afraid yeah. of taking the risk. Yes, absolutely. All right, great breakdown, guys. Now I'm liking the uh, fight going the distance at minus 145 more and Pettis by decision at plus 172. Uh, quickly, uh, uh, Andrea Sale, the, the fifth fight is uh, Omolanchuk against uh, against Blades. Obviously, Blades a huge favorite. It actually got bet way up recently and now it's taken, a, it went up to minus 900. It was like minus 500 earlier in the week. Then it went all the way up to 900. Now it's now uh, Omolanchuk is taking some money. It's now down to Blades but minus 750. Omolanchuk at plus 525 on the other side. Uh, the total is three and a half uh, over his minus 130. So obviously the market thinks that uh, an early finish by Blades is is a very likely result here. You think there's any way to bet this? I might have some value, Andreas Hale. No, they're heavyweights, and, and these guys come to knock each other out. So I, I, the way the Blades is such as a heavy favorite. I mean. One punch changes is a fight in the heavyweight division, so I stay away from lines that are that spread out. Yeah, I mean, should he be that big of a favorite, though? Maybe is Gold Omelanchik getting maybe a little bit disrespected at plus 500? Yeah, possibly. I mean, Blades, you know, uh, you know, I think he lost to Francis Ngannou, and, you know, looking back, I mean, Ngannou's killing everybody, so that's not a huge surprise, but... You know, you look at Curtis Blades, he's, he's a very dynamic striker. He's got heavy hands, but this is the heavyweight division. I, I think the, the, his yeah, opponent is just getting a little bit disrespected. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, every exactly. anytime you see a heavyweight as an underdog of plus 500 who's not like a complete over-the-hill guy, I'm thinking he's got to have at least some value because there'd be one punch could end the whole thing, right? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what happened with heavyweights. Like, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Sometimes the guy's going to be, like, falling, and then he just throw a punch, hits you on the, on the jaw like, a, you know, just a little punch, and you're going to be down. There's no way that you're going to survive. All right, so I don't know if you looked at this fight, Blades against Omelanchuk. Did you no, look at I can't. Much? I can't. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. have no opinion because I'm, I don't know. I'm about. passing on that one. All right, so let's wrap this up. Let's get our final official uh, picks from me and Andreas Hale, and then we'll get some final words from uh, Daniel Gracie. Uh, uh, Andreas Hale, I guess I'm going to pass on the Shevchenko-Nunez fight. I guess I uh, I would be leaning Shevchenko, but now the more I've talked to you guys and when I watch the weigh-in, now I'm starting to think it's just it's just too tough of a fight to call. Maybe just uh, just uh, watch it and, and forget about it. And then uh, I'm definitely on the over one and a half rounds, minus 190 in uh, in the Whitaker-Romero fight. That is uh, for sure. Uh, and then uh, Verdum by sub seems tempting, but I'm going to hold off on that one. And then the Miller-Pettis fight, going the distance. Those are two more picks. Going the distance, minus 145, and uh, Pettis by decision at plus 172. So that's three official picks I'm going to give here. Andreas Hale, what official picks do you like from this main card? Well, I'm going to agree with the three that you just said, but I'm going to hedge my bet with Amanda Nunez finishing inside the distance and Shevchenko winning by decision. Mm -hmm. I think those are the only two possible outcomes in my mind for that particular fight. Everything else that you mentioned is spot on with what I was All saying. All right, and uh, Daniel Gracie, let's uh, let's summarize uh, what you said. You like Nunez to get to get 100%. the finish, right? Yeah, I, I want it, and it's not just because I want it. I think she's going to get the finish, right. but... Uh, I don't think this fight is going to pass three rounds. Okay, and you also like Romero to get the win there, right? Oh, 100%. 100%. 100%. And you like Verdum to get the win over uh, over By submission. Overing. By submission. That's a big underdog line there, plus 565. Back to jiu-jitsu. Back to jiu-jitsu, Verdum. Mm -hmm. And then with Pettis <laughs> against Miller, it's a tough fight, tough matchup. I gave my opinions on how I'm going to bet this one. Uh, what do you think the likely outcome is there? Well, I think it's going to be fight of the night. They're going to be trying to, you know, uh, to strike each other, being smart. Like I said, they're not going to take the risk. But uh, at the same time, you know, when, when people start to push you, boo you if you're not engaging, they're going to come open at one point of the fight. I think the first round is going to be a little boring mm -hmm. because they're going to be concerned with each other. Yeah. But then once the round goes, and they're like, you know what? Let's go for it. So you don't think this one's going to go the distance then? No, no, no. I think it's going to okay. go the distance. But, but I exciting, think, yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be a beautiful fight. It's not going to be those distance boring fights. It's going right, to be a, right, an exciting right, fight. Right. All <laughs> right. Daniel Gracie, thanks so much for joining oh, us once you. again. Very, very insightful. Me. And as always, Andreas Hale, thanks so much. Glad to hear that we agree on uh, most of our opinions on this uh, main card. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.